Hello out there again in Google Plus land. This is Ronnie Bincer and Trevor Beck in our continuation of our series on how do we use Google Plus Hangouts, Hangouts on Air, both of those, and some type of presentation or collaborative tool from Google Drive. So the last session you may have seen, and if you didn't, go ahead and actually I was going to do it over here. Here we go. Go ahead and click on that thing over there. Uh, that'll be a link to take you back to the first video in the series. And how about we'll do this? This side, we'll do a link to the next one in the series so that when we're done, you'll have all of them that you can get to. We talked about Google Drive and the document feature primarily as a way to collaborate. collaborate. And we're going to look at that again, but not so much just with the doc or the spreadsheets, but we're going to focus more attention on the presentation tool. And the fact is the presentation tool is also a collaborative tool that we can both or everybody can use inside the Google Plus Hangout using the Google Drive app from within the Hangout. But there's also some tricks that we're going to show you near the middle to the end of this particular video that'll show you a good and efficient way to use this as a guided presentation tool. So Trevor, if you would walk us through what we're doing as far as just remembering to load this up so we can collaborate. To start. Right. Okay. So um, we're gonna go. I'm gonna do a full screen screen share so you can see what's going on, and uh, that will start right about now. So we're gonna load up Google Drive. Oh, there goes that Zoom can thing again. Can you blue box me? Maybe. Actually, that won't work, will it? That won't work. But how about this? Uh, uh, yeah. I, actually, I, I, the Google Drive. There we go. Now it's loading up. Okay. That works. Well, no, no, it didn't. Google Drive is not playing. There we go. Okay, so what good. we did in the last session is we took a look at loading up files within Google Drive. And my machine today seems to be having so much fun. So when Ronnie and I are sharing this 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 single file of presentation, it allows us both to view and to edit at the same time. By default, what ends up happening though is we both start at the same place, which is the first slide that you see. Now, that's where everything kind of uh, goes goes to the wayside, because the moment that I want to look at something else and I click on that, that means that my view is going to be of this third slide. Ronnie's still looking at the first slide and we lose control of the presentation. If, if the idea is for me or Ronnie to do a guided presentation step by step, we lose control of that once we uh, start sharing within the Google Drive within the Hangout because the whole idea behind it is collaboration. Right. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to take a look at using the Google Docs uh, presentation tool outside of the Hangout. And I'm going to keep the, the uh, screen share going on and I'm going to go back to my Google Drive. Ronnie, this is showing up, correct? Um, yes. Okay. Yep. So here you can see with, I'm within Google Drive, and there's all my different files. And if I click on the presentation, it will load up in a new tab. And this is the right. same file that we were just looking uh, working on. If uh, Ronnie was to make any changes, it would show up here and vice versa, even though he's still right. in the Hangout. And this now, is done from straight on Google Drive. Not you're not inside the Hangout. Just really, really stressing that. That's correct. No, nowhere near being in the Hangout. So we've got two windows open, and what we're going to do is we're going to pull this tab out and we're going to drag it into a separate window by itself. The reason we're going to do that is because we want to do a screen share of just this individual browser window. So in a second or two, you'll see what uh, what's involved with that. But right now, we're we've got a general screen share of my whole desktop. And off to the side here is the present. We're going to look at present with speaker notes. So two things are going to happen when I select that. I get a new window popping up with my presentation speaker notes. And the file, the, the, sorry, the window beforehand gets moved into presentation mode. So it's just a straight slide. That's right, so the, thumb, there. the thumbnails and other things that were on the left and the menus that were on the top are no longer visible. That's correct. We are now in presentation mode. And with the speaker notes off to the side here, I can actually move from one slide to the other. And what's really cool about this is my speaker notes actually display here off to the side. Mm -hmm. So 
for people who do, do slideshows, I know a lot of people don't like to do presentation notes, but the nice thing about this is that you've got those presentation notes available to you. And when we go into the actual presentation and screen share just the presentation, the viewers themselves won't see this. They're only going to be able to see the main slide. So let's so do that it's right kinda now. Like, it's almost like your remote control, right? Your little controller to click and change from slide to slide. No one is seeing necessarily that you're pushing the button. That's correct. They're only seeing the slide itself. That's correct. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to go and redo the screen share. And in this time, we're just going to choose the individual presentation window. Sounds good. Yep, I see it. Okay. And I'm going to be, now you can't see it right now, but I'm actually back at that speaker's notes window. I'm going to click on my next item. And the slide's in place now, and I can tell you from my speaker notes that this is Montezuma's Castle. It's a national monument, and it's located in Arizona. Those are all the notes that were attached to my slide. Nice. I'm now going to go to the next slide. And the transitions from slide to slide are activated through that speaker notes uh, controller as well as any objects that I happen to add to the slide as animation I can also control by clicking. So here's a, a piece of, of uh, some ruins and I've got some little heads, uh, headlines I'm going to be bringing in. Nice. And again, How old do you think these are? Really old. <laughs> and my, point for, or my notes here say these are amazing ruins that are located outside of Sedona, Arizona. Now let me, let me ask you a question before you move on to the next slide. I'm assuming that if you wanted to use your mouse, you could actually point to the little hole in the, what looks like the hole in the middle of that rock, man-made like, rock thing. That right there, yeah. Right there, yeah. That's a good point. When we're doing the screen share of the single browser window, anytime I bring in the, the mouse, it's going to show up. Okay, yeah, that's cool. So that's a neat bonus, I think, for, for using it this way. Right, and, and especially if you're doing something that's detailed and you want to, you know, point out a certain specific area and, to, you know, just, just makes it a lot easier because no one can see your face right now or our hands or anything like that. That little pointer uh, is, is going to be pretty handy. Right. And then finally, we have the last slide in my, my presentation that says this is an amazing formation that was used in a number of Western movies shot in the area. Cool. Very cool. All right, so what we've done there is you were able to guide the presentation. I was not able to, as a person wanting to look ahead, I wasn't able to do that. And so you were able to guide it in such a way that you could cover the information. And even if I, as a person, you know, I've been on the other side, if I was always asking you all these questions that you're about to answer in the next slide, you could say, that's a great question. Hold on, we'll get right to it. And then when appropriate, you can switch to the slide instead of dealing with the fact that I am already moved two or three or four slides ahead and asking you questions about that when you're not quite ready for the rest of the group to see that. Right. I mean, and as, as people in, uh, doing instruction and stuff, it's important for us to make sure that the people watching are focused on whatever we're presenting and not going through looking what's ahead and reading out that. And then, of course, they forget what you're saying and then kind of lose the whole point and purpose of what you're doing. Yeah, and just as a part of a, the topic of the discussion, last week, or la it was last week, the, the slide that we did last time, or the presentation we did talking about collaboration, there was a fair amount of people talking about, well, I'm okay with people knowing all the stuff that's going to be presented ahead of time. In fact, that's helpful. And I think in certain environments it might be. But for many, what we're trying to cover here is what's called a guided presentation, where we're controlling the flow of information because we've either done it enough times that we know what's going to be coming up or we just want more control, I guess, in the process of what information is being displayed in, in a certain order. So that is the method or technique that we're trying to get across. And quite frankly, if uh, you're sharing this out, um, and I know this happens to, I've talked to some instructors who have students and they will share the document on the screen. What happens is students will go in and start throwing in garbage, like, you know, Bob was here on the screen. That could also happen when you're looking at a screen share within Google, or sorry, not a screen share, when you're using Google Drive, because we're both sharing the same document. It's no different. So, uh, you know, at one point where I have the, um, the question is, uh, how old is this uh, piece? Someone else could go in there and retype it into a different question. And I've lost control of my presentation because someone else is now controlling the presentation and what's displayed there. Right, because when we're, when we're giving access to 
Actually, let me ask this as a question. When you're giving access to look at the presentation doc, for example, inside Google Drive, which is inside the Hangout, are you giving always having to give edit capabilities, or are they potentially just able to view it within the Google Drive app? Do you do you know? Actually, there is this. Um, you can select and just say view. Okay, so it's potential that they might not sabotage it, but there is the definite likeliness, the likeliness that they're going to be moving ahead at a different rate than you are as a presenter, That's and sure. th that makes it a little bit harder for that type of guided presentation. So without having to defend it that much more, let's just sort of get close to wrapping this up. We've got another video going to be coming up that's going to be part of our event where we're going to go into some tips and tricks of how to use this as efficiently as possible. But this seems to be, in my mind, trying to keep it in all the Google tools set, one of the best and most efficient ways to do a presentation inside of a Hangout or a Hangout on Air where it's a guided presentation. So do you have any other thoughts, Trevor, to add to that? No, other than uh, stick around because uh, come Friday at 1 o'clock and uh, Ronnie will make sure that the, uh, the link is in the, uh, the video here. We're going to be doing some more behind the scenes stuff and it's going to be a great time for you to ask questions and uh, that's, where, that's where the magic will be revealed. Right, that'll be January 11th, 2013. It's 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, but hopefully you'll be able to convert it to your particular local time zone. It should be automatically converted inside the event tool, although lately it's been a little bit wonky and hasn't quite done all the conversions right. But that should be coming up shortly. And again, click over here <laughs> if you want to see version 1 of the video, and over here if you want to see version 2. So we're going to stick in annotation links to let you go to those things. I'm sorry, we're in version two. That's going to be number three over here. It'll all make sense later. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right.